Hello, hello. Last time I featured the Mayhem, it unfortunately ended in a pretty devastating loss where I was team killed by a friendly Gneiser now. So I figured before I move on from this ship, I pretty much sold it at this point and moved on from it completely, I should at least uh, have a proper victory commentary for this one. Now the matchmaking is pretty unfortunate in the sense that they have both a Benson and a Bluska both of which can outspot me quite easily uh, they also have and both crew can outgun me quite easily as well well not easily necessarily but uh, they have significant advantages both of them and they have a Belfast which of course is always a massive threat to DDs because with Belfast concealment and radar uh, when you see him he can radar you and that's no fun at all because you, you tend to get wrecked by his HE right after so the matchmaking is going to be rough it's also tier 9 matchmaking although the majority is tier 7 which is my own tier but that still means of course that uh, it's not going to be an easy time by any means that's also of course one of the reasons why i figured i could do another commentary because in the last one i think i was the top tier so in this one i am the lowest tier rpf is pointing towards me so i do know that i'm gonna i should be able to get c fairly for free at least most likely for, likely for free because if a dd went for c i should have spotted him by, by now I also spam some preemptive torps that way uh the torp cooldown on the mayhem isn't so bad so you shouldn't really be afraid of using some preemptive torps on rpf locations rpf does switch now which kind of makes me regret using my torps earlier and suddenly a lot of ships are popping up I'm very surprised that the Belfast is already popped up. I wonder if he's not using Concealment Expert or something similar. But uh, that gives me a big heads up. I need to turn around. The Fiji is eating all of the damage. Since he was he spot, got spotted. And well, I wouldn't want to be this guy. And I get hugely unlucky. A Battleship Salvo meant for the Fiji hits me. And chunks away about a quarter of my health. That was a 4.5k hit. So... Losing a quarter of your health when you're not even spotted is very frustrating, but not really much I can do about it. I still kind of want to cap uh, cap C for my team. Uh, the problem is, because of the Belfast here, it's gotten pretty damn tricky. However, the Belfast did smoke up at pretty safe distance from me. So, uh, I know right now that as of this moment, there's no real threat of me being torp or me being radared. But the longer I stay, the more likely it is he will move up and radar me. So ultimately I decide it's not worth the risk. Oh, sorry about that. Just woke up. Oh, my bad, my bad. I should not yawn to your commentaries because I know it uh, triggers a lot of other people to yawn as well. So I drop the uh, torps on the Gneiser now. Then I turn around and drop torps on the Colorado. Of course you have double-sided tor torps on this one, meaning you have... Uh, you have a total of 15 torps available. Actually, no, wait, 12 torps? It's 4 per side. Yeah, of course. You've got a total of 12 torps available, so I drop 8 on one side and the last 4 on the other, since that's how you kind of have to split it up. I think my problem is with these torps is that they are very, very slow. As we can see, the torps on the Gneiser now, they all are too slow to actually catch him, so he's able to dodge them all. So. Uh, what started pretty awkwardly with us losing a Fiji with matchmaking being terrible and me getting randomly hit for a quarter of my health uh, seems to keep going in the bad direction as of this point a cyclone is about to hit though and the cyclone isn't really that big of a deal for a mayhem i mean if you run the concealment expert as i highly highly recommend you got 6.9k in concealment so you are able to outspot everything besides well dds in uh, in those issues we do get a bit lucky here, uh, the enemy Bliska detonates from our Belfast, but we're still down quite a lot. We've only gotten one kill, they have two kills. Oh, Colorado gives broadside. In case New Mexico, Colorado, any of these ships that with a lot of superstructure give you broadside, switch to AP. You can see the sheer amount of damage I'm doing with this AP. It's very, very heavy damage, and it's constant and fairly consistent, and uh, this Colorado is basically just melting to this AP fire. He's got so much superstructure to hit that it's pretty easy to farm him with AP. And I think this guy's going to die. Yeah, don't even have time for my torps to land, which is unfortunate. Pulling a target on the Belfast, I'm getting ready to move in case he radars me. But 
I hope my team is focusing him because getting rid of the Belfast would be a huge advantage for us. Because if the Belfast is gone, then I can actually push in and capture this point and we really need a cap. The enemy has A, uh, we are getting B, but getting C would help us a lot since we are still behind on points. I use HE instead of AP here because I want to, keep, want to keep him on fire so that he remains spotted. He is, however, shooting in the open, which is really, really strange because, well, with as many ships as we have on our team, that's not very intelligent. I think he was put, trying to reposition and re-smoke, but he gave broadside to a lot of people and got punished in the process. So the, now the enemy team has kind of, well, pretty much pussied out at this point. There's no real uh, other way of putting it. All their battleships have bailed and uh, well, there's still an enemy Benson somewhere. But if I look at the minimap, I can see that the enemy Benson is pushing into our spawn. And uh, that's, of course, lucky for me. My team is, of course, being extremely hesitant to do anything as well, which is pretty surprising considering we outnumber them heavily on this flank. Our entire team is on this flank, but they're all hiding pretty far back, which is strange because uh, if they push together, we could easily overwhelm this flank. However, uh, moving on, the Benson is pushing down into our spawn, which is great for me because if this Benson was smart, okay, these are our target torps. I'm sure I don't eat one unnecessarily. Uh, if the Benson was smart, he would push into B and then push to C where he could stop our push and he could torp and he could spot me and he could just be a general nuisance. Instead he's pushing into a spawn which is very common. A common player mistake is sailing into the enemy spawn to hunt some single kill or something like that and because he does this move uh, it allows me to se secure this cap and it allows my team to kind of push in uh, in a situation where they really shouldn't be allowed to push in like this. So um, misplay from enemy DD but it's worth noting this kind of misplays are a pretty big deal for us now I kind of want to go and cap B but all of these ships as long as they sail in relatively straight lines I need to I want to try to get some sort of damage on them as well to help my team because uh, I'm pretty sure some of my team at least is going to be sailing into the enemy spawn and uh, take them on so if I could manage to land some torps on the Friedrich de Grosse the Friedrich de Grosse of course is a very strong ship but he has Pretty bad, uh, pretty bad torpedo belt, and in general, it handles really terribly. So if it's not if it's not running hydro, then uh, even these mayhem torps can cause a significant amount of damage. Also, dropping torps on the Gneisenau, up well, because once again, when you use one side of the torps, might as well use the other as well. Try to keep your torp tubes somewhat in sync, that when one side is available, the other side is as available as well. Gneisenau with some very ambitious torps. I see this constantly. I see this constantly, German battleships and German cruisers using their torps uh, on targets that are 10 km away and uh, that's because none of them really know how to look at the distance. They, they are all 6 km torps, but none of them know how to like properly evaluate the distance or look, look at the distance of the torps and they keep using them in the weirdest situations. I only land 2 torps, very very minimal damage, but worth noting is that I cause a flooding and it appears he had used his repair. So you can see he is continually flooding now. So that's a pretty big deal for my team. We are finally managed to equalize the points. But looking at my Nagato and Colorado, you can see it well. They are still on the 9 line behind the cap. And that's of course a problem. I'm gonna see if I can get some maybe a fire going on this guy. Some additional damage. Turns out I'm the only one spotting him. Or actually no, I think the Cyclone, the cyclone finally hit. So any... Uh, luck I would have at getting a fire is probably not gonna work yeah, and no, the Friedrich de Grasse behind me isn't capable of spotting this guy either so I think it's time to start moving towards B and see if we can get the cap I am pretty hesitant to move there mostly because uh, they still have the Fiji there and Fiji melts DDs it's brutal the way a Fiji melts a DD so you really don't want to get too close to one of those because if I do get spotted by him, I will get completely wrecked. Also worth noting that Benson is still sailing around in our spawn, but because they have a Fiji and very little, uh, we have very little battleship backup. There's a plane here somewhere. I'm trying to spot where it is. I can't see it. I do manage to land torps on the Gneisenau though. Torps are launched in my smoke, and well, he looks pretty damn dead. Popping speed boost, and well, he's gonna get melted, I think, by my teammates. 
But I'm gonna see if I can get some fires burning on him, or maybe finish him off since he's so long. Nope. He gets killed anyway. You notice I did 3000 damage HE, and that's because uh, his superstructure was pretty much completely unsaturated. Uh, so that means pretty much anywhere I hit, I was gonna, going to deal full full damage or full percentage damage that I possibly could. Anyway, moving on to B now. It looks like this Frid de Grosse is on some sort of adventure in their spawn, as is the Otago. But we are still behind on points because they're holding this cap, so I'm going to see if I can help my Belfast out a bit. He is pushing in against the York, which I don't recommend though. RPF is pointing to the to the right here. I'm gonna see if I can drop torps before I go there. York manages to get killed. Oh, and here we have the Friedrich Grosse, exactly as I hoped. He was pushing this way, so I drop my torps on him, and I hope to get behind the island, and I hope to actually make sure he's undetected, because when you're undetected as a battleship, you think you're completely safe, so maybe he d won't pay too much attention to being briefly detected like he was and we'll happily keep sailing in a straight line. It's a very common thing. You, oh, I got spotted. Oh, I got undetected. I'm perfectly fine. Let's sail in a straight line. And then they get killed. Yeah, my torps look pretty damn good. This is such a common mistake though. Small, just small course, small course and the speed changes would help this guy so much. But straight lining in battleships is pretty much the only reason why torpedo boats are as strong as they are in this game. Because people really have no idea how to actively dodge torps. And we mani with that we secure the B cap. And now we finally have the lead for the first time in this game. Worth noting that the Benson has pushed into C and he is securing C. Uh, at this point I am pretty confident in our ability to win. And I figure I am pretty healthy as well. So I'm gonna go see if I can help out my team against this Benson, chasing them at sea. Also, there's a Gneisen now that was seen in our spawn. I, I mean, it would make sense for a battleship to chase after a DD. Usually battleships tend to be quite cowardly, and they only dare to go where a DD has gone. So you, if you see the enemy team push together, like you see at the start of the game, you see battleships heading towards the cap, then you should assume there's a DD there as well, because battleships by habit are very cowardly and they will not push in somewhere alone. And in the same sense here, I know there's a Benson at sea because it's being capped, so that tells me most likely the Gneisenau Gne is also making his way towards uh, here, instead of going for B, which is on a cap. Because once again, battleships by nature, quite cowardly players. Benson is trying to YOLO torp our Friedrich de Grosse, which might actually work out fairly well for him. But I'm here to help out in case he doesn't die from the first volley, which he doesn't. So I'm gonna give some additional DPS and hopefully we can kill him before he gets his torps off. And we do. And that keeps the Friedrich Egg also alive. His, his plan wasn't uh, necessarily that bad. It's just that uh, if I hadn't been there, he would probably have been able to turn in time and wreck him. He, the Friedrich Egg Grosso says thank you because he also realizes that uh, without my additional firepower, he would probably have gotten YOLO torp. Otago, very low, about to die. Let's see, where is the Gneisen now? Yes, as expected, the Gneisen now is also here at C. So instead of going for B, which was the cap that they were they, they, they were lacking, he was chasing behind, um, chasing behind the Benson instead. And uh, I mean, it might might not be the most flattering stereotype for battleship players, but it's it's just a simple fact. I really, really want to torp him here. Like, I want to torp this guy so desperately. But if I torp right now, I have such a high chance of landing torps on my Friedrich de Grosse, who's rushing him. So I just pop speed boost and charge into him. Because the Gneisen I can't really afford to shoot me with this guy being so healthy. I need a bit more lead so I can fire these torps without any risk. Might as well bring my guns to bear. Switching to AP since he's giving broadside. Now I have enough lead, finally. I wish I could have launched these torps a lot earlier since I would have been able to do a lot more damage. But now I finally feel comfortable enough to be able to launch these torps because the 3D, I have enough lead on the 3D. And he's actually turning away. So now, now there's no longer a risk of me just straight up team killing him. I'm trying to see if I could maybe secure the cap while I kill him for the additional XP because I think this is like my daily win in this ship. So a good XP chunk would be welcome. He does finish off... Oh, the Belfast. Belfast was also here. 
but my torps are going to catch up to him. The torps are very slow, so you kind of get need to take a huge lead. Managed to wrap in a witherer here as well. Gonna see if I can cap it. Oh, look at the timer though. What is my timer doing? That capture timer it tends to do these glitchy kind of things when it gets very close to zero, which can be quite frustrating if you're waiting and hoping to get the capture. Anyway, the game does end with that kill. Sadly, no Kraken. Would have been nice to manage to secure the Kraken in this one, but unfortunately wasn't able to. Still though, 191,000 damage in a Mayhem against tier 9 is uh, very respectable. And uh, 10k XP, since of course it I think it was my uh, daily win in this ship. Uh, base XP wise, 2.7k. Once again, with a Kraken, we could have been approaching 2.9k territory maybe, which would have been a bit more impressive. But still, uh, I'll happily take it, considering the awkward start that this game had. Uh, looking on the detailed report, 12 torps landed, 87k. A huge amount of flooding damage on that Friedrich de Grosse. Uh, 46,000, which helped a lot in getting the Wither. Of course, 16,000 fire damage. And not to be underestimated is the fact that I did 41,000 in gunpowder. So even though the Torps of Flooding gave me a lot of damage, it was still 41k damage dealt with the guns alone. And a huge chunk of that is the AP damage as well. So never ever ne neglect the Mayhem guns because the Mayhem firepower is very, very impressive. Anyway, I do have, uh, if you're wondering what build I'm using, I just recently made a Mayhem commentary. I can even link it in the comment below. And that's the Mayhem build that I'm using. It's my pretty much standard USDD build and I've been very satisfied with it. Anyway, with this, with this though, I am pretty much done with the Mayhem. I don't feel like playing this ship anymore. I feel like I've uh, gotten familiar with the, uh, with the new version. Well, new and new. It was buffed ages ago. I just haven't played it. And uh, I'm going to be moving on to some other USDDs that I haven't made a commentary on in a while. Anyway, that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it.